be tying a bonefish bitter. This is a size six saltwater hook, and I have some uh, white six salt thread here. I'm gonna start by uh, getting the thread on the hook there. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna introduce some bead chain eyes. These are gonna be mounted on the top of the hook with a figure eight type pattern. Um, these ones happen to be a hot orange color. We're gonna uh, kind of progress our way back just about to the bend of the hook there. At that point in time, this is my own little variation on this pattern, but uh, we're gonna be adding in some, uh, some orange marabou here. A little bit more of a hot spot, if you will. And I'm just gonna go just for the tips of this marabou. Go ahead and trim it off. Um, next up is going to be some dubbing. And I'm just gonna actually use a little bit of, uh, this is an ice dub rusty brown. And this is just gonna give the bottom and front of this fly kind of this cool little prismatic effect. If there's any insulting marabou there, that's okay. We'll just throw a few wraps in. And next up for legs, we're gonna be using some uh, Senya Shaggy Dub and Tan. And the way I go about working with this is I just pull out a healthy clump and I start uh, just separating out the shorter pieces from the longer pieces. And all I'm gonna do is uh, take it, half it around our thread here, and simply just put it in place. Now it's gonna have quite a profile going on, which is fine. In my own personal opinion, I think a little bit extra movement doesn't hurt. Looks really leggy. And I'll just go ahead and wrap those in so that they're standing out pretty well. And, you know, we can trim them to fit if we, later in the uh, pattern if we'd like to. Next up, this is just some deer hair. You can see I've been working on this patch for a while. So I'm gonna take about a pencil's worth of uh, deer hair here. Make sure the tips are pretty darn even, looking pretty good. And uh, we're just gonna apply this just about even with the hook shank there. So what I do is I throw in a few securing wraps. I'm gonna go ahead and pull straight down. And we bring our thread forward. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish, change up this pattern a little bit. What we're gonna be using in lieu of uh, the traditional glittery epoxy type uh, material actually is going to be um, some of our UV pigment. This happens to be mixed in with a thick. This is our pumpkin orange. Um, it is a great, great salt color as well. So I'm actually gonna bring it into that deer hair just slightly. And once I get it there, you see it has a nice even look to it. We're gonna take our lamp and we're gonna cure it for the required 10 to 15 seconds. So as long as you don't overboard your, your uh, pigments and your resin, it's gonna be working out just perfect for you. It's gonna create a durable, glossy finish with minimal tack. So when we come back underneath here, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna apply just a little bit more of our resin system here. And we'll go ahead and we can clean this back up here in a second once we're done. So. And if need be, we can come back in and uh, spruce it up a bit. This does build upon itself, it's really really pretty good and I'm just using those orange eyes to kind of help it blend in as best as possible so at this point we'll come back in and we'll do a little bit of sprucing up a 
flatten out the bottom of this pattern here. And I kind of make as much quick work of some of these legs as I can. But I really ultimately do kind of like them to be um, erratic and wild. We're going to finish it up with a little bit of our flow I'm using the larger needle today with that. Um, just because I wanted a little bit more umph on this top section here. Alrighty, and there you go. That is a very basic saltwater pattern, and uh, and it's going to land and work just perfectly for most of your uh, saltwater applications. Thanks for watching.